to Azul Coding. In this video, I'll show you how to allow the user to drag and drop files and HTML elements with JavaScript, including how to use a plugin to add support for touchscreen devices too. As always, there'll be linked to all the code in the description down below. I've already set up the HTML page that we're going to be using, along with some styles at the top, and a link to a new JavaScript file that we'll use in just a moment. Be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Let's get started by dragging and dropping files. I've gone ahead and set up a div element that our users will drop files into, along with a bullet point list that will be populated with information on the files the user has dropped. I've also added in the CSS for the drop zone above, including a hover effect, so that when the user is about to drop files over the drop zone, a brief animation will occur. Like another JavaScript file now, we'll add in a DOM content loaded event listener, which will run when the page is ready, setting some variables for the file drop zone and bullet point list elements. Not all devices will support dragging and dropping files into the browser, especially on mobile, and so we'll want to make sure this feature is available using this if statement. Let's now add in some event listeners. The first one is the drag over event, which will occur when the user drags something over the file drop zone. To tell the browser that we're taking care of this event handling and not to perform any actions of its own, we'll use event.stop propagation and event.prevent default. We'll set the drop effect to copy. Other possible values include move or link, and we'll be sure to add a drag over class to the drop zone, so that the animation from earlier takes effect. We'll want to reverse this, i.e. remove the class when the user has dragged the items out of the drop zone, and we can do that with a simple drag leave event listener, like so. And finally, the core functionality will be in the drop event listener, which takes place once the user has actually dropped files into the file drop zone. Let's remove the drag over class as before, and use event.stop propagation and event.prevent default again. Now let's iterate through event.datatransfer.files, which contains a list of files the user has dropped. Let's get the name and size of each file. And if we have a size variable, because it'll be in bytes, let's convert it to color bytes like so. We can also get the file type, so let's say we only want to allow image files here. Let's check if we have a file.type property, and then restrict it to just images by checking the MIME type starts with image. So the image type could be image, slash, png, jpeg, gif, etc. Within the if statement, let's create a new list item element, set the text for the element, and append it to the bullet point list. Let's test that and see if it works. So if I drag a couple of files into the drop zone, you can see the animation occurs as I drag the files over the drop zone, and reset as I drag them out. If I drop the files, the names and sizes of each file is displayed in the bullet point list below. Now we've looked at the files, let's drag and drop HTML elements. I've now removed the HTML code from before and replaced it with this, along with some new styles above. We've now got three items that could be rearranged by dragging and dropping them into each other, as you might expect. One thing to point out though is this data item attribute which is essentially a custom attribute that we'll use to identify each of these items. Another thing is the cursor move and user select none CSS styles. This sets the cursor image and stops the user from selecting the text in these items respectively. Let's go to the JavaScript file with the DOM content loaded event handler already there. Let's set up some variables that we'll use in just a moment. Once the page is ready, we'll set items to the free draggable elements we've got using this query. We'll start by setting up an event handler for when the user starts to drag an item. We can set the opacity of this item to 0.4 and set our dragged element variable to the item. We also need to set the drop effect for this operation. When dealing with files, we use copy. Here we'll use move. We can then use the setData function to store some related data that we can access later. We'll use the inner HTML, which will be A, B, or C. Let's then continue with the other event listeners, a drag over event which essentially sets the drop effect property. Drag enter which will add the drag over class to the item, just like we did before. And the drag leave event removes that class. We'll also need a drop event listener for when the user has dropped the item.
and if the dragged element is being dropped over a different element, we'll need to replace it by setting the inner HTML and data item attribute like so. We'll then use the data transfer .get data function to access the data we stored earlier and ensure that both items have now sought places. The last event listen we'll need is for when the dragon event has ended, in which case we'll reset the item's opacity to 1 and remove all occurrences of the drag over class from each element. Finally, let's add all of these event listers to each of the items. Let's test it out. As you can see, I can swap each of these items around. The animation works as expected as well. However, if I open DevTools and simulate a mobile touch experience, the dragon doesn't seem to work. So let's finish off by using a plugin to add touchscreen support. In the HTML I've added four draggable elements and two drop zones. Items with the letter A can be correctly dragged into drop zone A, and items with the letter B can only be correctly dragged into drop zone B. I've added some styles above for the new content, making sure to include this line for touchscreen support, touch action none, but the most important thing is this script which adds in our plugin. A reference to it will be in the description. In the JavaScript file, I've got an empty DOM content loaded event listener, along with a function to handle the dragon of the items provided by the plugin. Be sure to implement the listener with this line of code. Let's first add an on drag enter event listener that will add some CSS classes to the draggable element, which is event.relatedTarget, and the drop zone, which is event.target. This function will only execute if the item is over a valid drop zone, so for example, if you're dragging the letter A over drop zone B, the event listener won't be triggered. We'll similarly add a on drag leave listener to reverse the above. And an on drop listener for a valid drop zone drop. In the DOM content loaded event listener, we'll initiate the drop zones A and B like so, specifying which HTML elements to accept in the drop zone, along with a 75% overlap requirement for the item and its drop zone. And lastly, we'll specify the draggable items. I'll demonstrate the initial effect in a bit, but the auto scroll property will scroll the page as you drag the item if appropriate. And the following properties are needed for most dragon events like this. Let's try it out. So as I move one of these items, you can see by the change in colour which is the valid drop zone. Trying the same for one of the other letters. And I mentioned the inertia property which essentially allows you to flick the item across the page like so. Feel free to set this to false to disable it. And this also works in touchscreen mode. Take a look at my collection of open source tests on my mobile apps and explore my new language in insight. They are both 100% free so check out the link in the description to find out more. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest from Azul Coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.